Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this tutorial on uh, training Mario uh, to play with reinforcement learning. Uh, and more specifically, I'm going to be doing dueling DQN, but at the same time, we'll be covering uh, double DQN and prioritize replay. Okay, so this is going to be quite a dense tutorial. So uh, if you haven't seen my previous videos on uh, DQN and uh, policy gradients, please, please watch it before you come to this tutorial. Um, so yeah, so anyway, uh, if you've already done that, let's get started. Um, so just to give you some motivation, let me just show you how this plays along. So in an untrained uh, agent, this is what happens, right? So if you can see Mario is going back and forth, he doesn't really know what to do. He's not even trying to go to the right, which is really what we want to be doing. And uh, once, once uh, I've trained this, and, and just a disclaimer, I haven't really trained it for too long. Uh, so the entire notebook takes about 15, 25 minutes. Um, so yeah, so after a small, relatively small amount of time, this is what it manages to do. Where are we? Here we go. Uh, let's rewind. Okay, so it, it's managed to go to the right and it manages to kill one of the, the monsters. It knows that it needs to jump over the pipes, but it dies. Okay, the world restarts and then we go again. Right, so um, yeah, um, so this is the model that I've built. All right, uh, let's get into the code. Also, uh, I should let you know that I am using PyTorch. Even though I am using PyTorch, you, uh, if you use Keras or TensorFlow, I don't think it's going to matter too much. You should be able to read it, uh, mainly because most PyTorch co code is uh, relatively similar to um, Keras or uh, I, should, I should rather say NumPy. Okay, first thing first, uh, we're going to install some libraries, especially, especially uh, Super Mario Brothers Gym. Okay, so you need to be installing that. And then the next thing, we import, import libraries. Um, and yeah, so these lines are where we are getting the Mario environment in. These are the, uh, so these are the seven options of actions that we can do. Okay, so no up, right, so on. Now, if you remember, um, the, the, the agent that we're building doesn't actually understand this no up means no up or right means go right. Okay, so all it understands is that I get some rewards when I play this action. Is it good or bad? Okay. Um, yeah, let's, so these things are all for animation. Uh, we can skip this bit, which is a random agent. Uh, where do we need to get to? Ah. Okay, so pre-processing. So I, I do cheat in this, um, in this thing a bit by pre-processing the frames. Um, so in, in an ideal world where I have infinite compute and infinite time, I suppose I, I don't need to be doing this cheat, but for the sake of making things simpler, what I do is I, um, I crop a bit of the top and bottom of the Mario agent, right? So for example, the bricks over here, I don't really need to know. The scores up here, I don't need to know because the, uh, the environment is feeding me back the rewards. So I scroll a bit of the top and bottom. I take uh, the sum of all three channels of the RGB. Um, and I take every second pixel. Okay, so um, in the end, what uh, what the agent is going to be seeing is the last four frames. So that's the other trick. It's going to be seeing the last four frames of of uh, of, the, of the environment that I just saw. Okay, so this this is a kind of example that you that the um, agent is going to be seeing. Okay, right now let's skip to the models. Um, now again, yes, I am using. Uh, Torch models, but that's that's really besides the point. You can you can ignore that if you choose to. But um, okay, let's first of all let's talk about the architecture of the model. All right. So I did mention that we're going to be using a thing called dueling uh, a dueling DQN, um, and that relates to the architecture of the model. Okay. So before I tell you what what that looks like, let me just show you what a normal uh, model looks like. Okay. So a normal Q network CNN will take in um, so X over here is the last four frames, and it's going to do your usual convolutional ReLU pool, convolutional ReLU pool, reshape, and then uh, two more la two more fully connected layers. Okay, so that's that's what it's doing. So if you don't understand PyTorch code, like I'm telling you right now, that this is how you can do it in Keras. Okay, now um, the X that it's outputting over here is the number of actions. Okay, so it'll take in a say a 255 by 255 image, um, and then it's going to output 
seven uh, seven numbers. Okay, so and those seven numbers corresponds to those actions, the seven actions. Um, and what it's saying is that for for a given state, these are the values of each action. Okay, so if I go left, this is the value of it. And and by value, uh, okay. And just a quick reminder, what does value mean? Value is the sum of the of the current reward plus any future future discounted reward. Okay, the keyword over there is discounted, which we'll come back to soon. Okay, so that's so that's the model. Uh, but it turns out this archi architecture called dueling uh, Q networks are actually much better. Okay, so let me show you what a dueling uh, Q network looks like. Um, here we go. All right, so this, the top one is your normal uh, CNN. So you take your image, you end up with your final, uh, final vector that says for each action, what's the value. But what we do for dueling thing is that we split up. So after your final convolution, you split it up into two. Okay, so the one branch is going to go and uh, say, this is the value of the state. The second branch is going to say, what's, what's my advantage of taking uh, going left compared to going right okay so in the end what we do is we add the value onto all those uh, all those actions right so so that's that's the idea right so what um again the second the second thing over here is what what is the advantage of each particular action so anyway we'll come back to this uh let's keep going all right uh oops all right so in the in the case of dueling tqn i have two sets of fully connected uh layers all right so one one of them only has one um, output node. The other one has action size uh, of output nodes. All right. So the, the two branches that that I was just talking about. So in the end, what I do is I um, so I end up reshaping them, and I have a value branch. So which takes this x over here. So it does a fully connected value, and then another fully connected uh, thing to get your value. But the advantage. Uh, so yes, we do take you, you do take two uh, fully connected things as usual, but we do this somewhat strange thing called uh, minus in the mean uh, of of those advantages. Now, if you're wondering why we do that, uh, the reason is so. Let's let's go back to let me show you some equations. So unfortunately, I did say this is quite dense. So, um, uh, but um, hopefully, I, I should I should be able to simplify things for you. Uh, where are we? Okay, so so the for the so the value of each state action pair. For, so for a given state as an input, uh, what's the value of a thing? This is what you do. You add the value and the advantage, right? So now if I don't minus the mean, what's good? What's going to say? What's going to happen is that it uh, the value of the value of the the value and the advantage can be arbitrary. So what I mean by that is if i um if i minus 5 to the value and add 5 to the each of those actions that is no different to me minus plusing 5 to uh value and minusing 5 from advantage so the the point being i can just add a constant so it's really hard to estimate uh it's, so it's it's just going to make it the the it's going to make it harder for the network to to understand that one branch is supposed to calculate the value of the entire state and the other one's supposed to simply calculate advantage. Okay, so basically, when I minus the mean, so when I when I minus the mean, like the the mean of those actions becomes zero, right? So basically, it, in in that sense, it's just adding like adding adding or minusing a bit to the value for for each action. Okay, now this is a, a really easy paper to read. So if you haven't read this before, I will. I'm going to place a, a link for it. So this is the dueling DQN paper. Uh, so if that didn't make sense, please go ahead and read this, or feel free to ask questions below, and I will comment. Uh, but anyway, let's keep going. All right. So uh, so yeah. So now we have covered dueling DQNs. All right. Now before I get onto the actual uh, DQN algorithm that we're going to play around with this over here. Let me just talk you through the memory buffer, right? So, um, so keep in mind, I need to save states, actions, rewards, uh, and next states when it comes to uh, any any Q algorithm, all right? And and duns for that matter. Um, now, one one thing that I do 
So yes, I do save it in torch arrays uh, as opposed to simple arrays or um, NumPy uh, arrays, uh, just, just to speed things up, right? So I, I say the maximum, the maximum that I'm gonna hold is a, a buffer size. Um, but one thing I really want you to focus on putting all that aside is that I, I do this, I save the error as well, okay? So what I mean by the error is we have, um, we have the estimate of what the, uh, we have the Q value of the current state and action pair, uh, but um, let, me, let me come back to that, okay? So let me come back to what error means exactly. Uh, but anyway, so the memory buffer, what it does, it's, it adds a state action reward next state uh, uh, pairs on, onto this array, but it also lets you sample, okay? Uh, now, we, we are going to use a thing called prioritize replay, right? So prioritize replay means that um, when I run through the entire data set and train, some of them are going to have bigger errors than the other, okay? And I want to focus on the episodes, or, or rather the instances, where there were bigger errors as com compared to tiny errors where the model fit perfectly. So when I know the model fit perfectly, I don't want to go and re revisit those times, right? So because of that, um, if, if I do want a priority, prioritized replay, I choose according to this logic, right? So basically it says, choose a batch size, um, re don't replace the instances, but with the probability of P, where it's, it's uh, proportional to the absolute value of the error. Okay, if I don't care about prioritized replay, I just, I just choose a few indexes, and then I just sample from those things, all right? Um, yeah, so this update error thing over there. Uh, so basically it's, it's my agent is gonna feed in the, the value of those errors. Um, all right, and the final thing, the 